Hey, hello and welcome back. A short break it was indeed because we keep our promises over here at the NECC. I'm FBI Tubboat here with me is no longer Galgan. Galgan, you, you've changed. It's bare light now. It's bare light. <laughs> we have the same length of hair now, by the way. Galgan with his big haircut coming through and he's looking, he's looking yeah, right? sharp, man. Looking sharp. Absolutely, absolutely. We just well, uh, uh, bear light. I'm sure you've been sure you've been paying attention, chat or whatnot. We have had some fantastic Rocket League on the day so far. Two squads going down from uh, what well, little Oklahoma versus Oklahoma action. Some uh, not interstate, but intrastate, right within the state of Oklahoma battle going on down. That was a three-two barn burner as well. Now coming hot off the heels of Northwestern putting down OC Bravo. That was Oklahoma Christian Bravo in three-one fashion. Now we got. The Florida Tech Crimson. This is the Panthers taking on the Stevenson Varsity A squad. Stevenson sending multiple squads. This is the Stangs over here, the Mustangs for the Stevenson Varsity A. 100%. And this team is on fire when it comes to uh, their expectations this season coming in. They may be one in z or zero and one right now. But listen, it was to Kennesaw, and, and, and a lot of mm. teams dropped to Kennesaw, right? A very difficult team to go up against. So at zero and one, they're going to want to go ahead and get their season going from here on out, right? It's how do you focus on this game in front of you and how do you transition it into games in the future, right? That's going to be their primary focus when they go up against this one and zero Florida Tech team. Exactly. Florida Tech as well. Win is a win. I'll challenge you to say otherwise, folks. Unfortunately, URG White was unable to play last week, so that was a forfeit win. Technical 3-0, whatever, whatever you want to call it here, Bear Light. But yes, regardless, a 0-1 a squad trying to fight back at this one and not go 0-2 in the re within the regular season. Even if they do, of course, it's a longer season and whatnot. But other squad right here, Florida Tech, the Panthers, having struck first, and now looking to stay undefeated across game or week number two. That's right. And, and of course, you know, you don't want to see week one be a forfeit. Uh, but then at the same time, you're off to his one zero start. Like you mentioned, it's still good vibes. And you come into the next one and you get this first win and you're two and zero. Keep it going, right? Keep that momentum up. It'll be super important that this team does exactly that to you. Um, they do have a lot of uh, experience as well. Most of these players, you know, uh, are junior, senior, graduate student, right? One freshman joins mm -hmm. him, though, in Sloth. I have we haven't gotten to see Sloth play because obviously freshman year coming in uh, yep. in this first semester too. Let's see what kind of a difference maker Sloth can be. It'll be his first appearance here, at least in the NECC specifically, and we're excited to see what they're able to bring to this team. Uh, see if they could be a dynamic difference maker in this series. Absolutely, absolutely. Some young guns, some young blood in here on the Rocket League pitch. Let's go ahead and take a look at what two teams these squads be fielding here on the day. Taking a look, Florida Tech University here. And first, yes, the freshman coming on here and getting a start and early. That is Sloth right there. We got Beastin' and Feastin', a senior out there, business administration. And says he play, he collects baseball cards. Love it. Love it. It doesn't make me feel so old, right? <laughs> Looking at das Dask as well. Diego Salvador. Love the name. Junior Mechanical Engineering and played. Perhaps you can kind of inform me as what this means. I can't. I'm just going to spell it out first. S-A-R-P-B-C. That's right. Star PBC. That's right. It was, a, it was the first version of Rocket League, actually, pre Rocket League. It's oh, a supersonic yep. acrobatic rocket powered battle cards. Yep. <laughs> if you want to gotcha, get gotcha. to that one, yeah. I was thinking like newer games, newer games right here. Honestly, Sarp BC almost sounds like a like a milsim, right? Like a obviously supersonic acrobatic, but like yeah, Sarp yeah. BC. This sounds like a milsim. <laughs> anyway, anyway, taking a look at Stevenson here, Bear Light. That's right, Stevenson coming in again, like we mentioned, zero and one, but they have a stacked roster to be honest, and they're young too, right? We have Planet coming in uh, as a sophomore. We get a business major. Uh, Mar as well, you know, coming in as a sophomore. So like I mentioned, uh, you know, a little bit of experience that they can carry in, but also a young team that they can build around 100%. So uh, Mar as that film major, also as a twin brother, that's pretty cool. So uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, of course. You know, you always have to wonder, maybe they're good at Rocket League too. I know twins are pretty good with the same things, but one can only wonder there. Uh, an optic will round out this roster as well. The junior coming in. So even more experience there. Graphic design major with a cat named Atari. You gotta love that. Speaking of aging ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Well, I, I have a cat named Bruce. How about that? We all have cats named something. No, no, no. Rohan, Rowan, Rowan, excuse me, Robertson. Jesus, I just butchered that one. Um, 
But uh, but yeah, so so we're looking at a a, a more middle of the road when we're talking about age. Now that doesn't obviously always translate to experience. But looking at the other side, Florida Tech, we, we got a freshman, we got a senior, we got a junior, we got a graduate student out here as well. Uh, they, they can play is on the bench right now, probably not starting. That's Alo over there, graduate student. But uh, but but a wide smattering of age range here for Florida Tech, and much much closer together here for Stevenson. That's right. These players, you know, because they, you know, basically came into school at the same time, does that give them some sort of connection? And it's only time will tell here as we begin game number one. And Stevenson trying to put the foot down on the gas pedal pretty early. They will take a shot, but that was easily handled by Daz. And we'll try to float one high. And again, no real threat. And Stevenson will just watch it go out the center of Florida Tech Crimson. Other opportunity as well, but only temporarily now is Daz. Ooh! It's off by Mark! He's stronger, he flexed on it. Man, oh man, put it on the poster right here. Is, uh, this other player is just running around getting demos down bottom slot. Most recent up of their rampage, and that's going to be Stevenson off the back of the defense or the offensive uh, demo as well. Florida Tech now going down here and early. Planet finding one of their O's, imposing their will right now. Stevenson University in the demo game. Oh my goodness. Got it. Again. Yeah, Stevenson. We talked about how, you know, you might be zero and one. But that was one of the best teams in the NACC. Right? And now, you know, you, you come back and you see right off the bat, I mean, the pressure has been sustained with, with Stevenson University. But in addition to that, they've also been able to capitalize whenever they get the pressure. So this has been <laughs> a very strong effort. The do. double fake. The double fake right there, absolutely love it. Just like the last second, I love that. I love that. 45 seconds into this one, Stevenson has managed to strike twice. Take a look at Dask as well. Dask already has two saves as well here, Bear Light. I can tell you everything you need to know about Stevenson University's offensive prowess here and early. Game number one of this best of five Woo! series. That was a strong shot as well from Florida Tech, but it'll be Stevenson again answering the bell. Off the top of it. As Planet will look to capitalize on this one, has Optic there too. The passing play was just a little bit wide, was the shot at least. They're still on it though. We'll gun it, but it's gonna be well high. The freshman, the freshman in sloth, trying to clear this all, but Stevenson has their way with this midfield presence that just continues to trap for the tech. We can't find their way out. And now another, another shot at Timo. They're after yeah. what here? Talk about it, it shows. Yeah, uh, the roles this individual players on Stevenson University, I think that those have become uh, strikingly, explosively clear, you might even say. Mar is just on demo patrol down bottom, making Florida Tech look like they are driving across a minefield, a verifiable minefield. They're going to have to sweep that one for the next 25 years. And it is not let off. They're right back to it. You win it. Oh, couldn't do much. Optic, great pass down. Mar had the opportunity, but Dask will play it up from this back wall. Dask, you know, in, in his mind, trying to transition into some offense. It's great making escape after escape, but eventually you want to translate into something productive when it comes to the yeah, outdoor uh, it's always the, you know, t take your defense wins championships, leaves that with American football. This is Rocket League, folks. You simply have to spend some time on the offensive side, especially when you're talking about champs division, high skill level. It is very infrequent that you'll be able to turn a block and clear into a shot going all the way down the other way with that actually making it in. you got to spend a lot of time on offense. The more time you do, hey, it's more sc scoring opportunities, folks. That's what that flip breeze that they shot, but Mark was able to make that save. Optic was a little bit awkward there on that curvature. As they got to it, now open net here. Stevenson yep. giving it forward. First real mistake that we've seen out of Stevenson in Florida Tech made a pick. Yeah. Uh, well, we always say, Rocket League, like many other competitions, taking advantage of mistakes. Florida Tech, the first real one, first obvious one at least, right? Florida Tech. Panther is going to swipe onto this one. Stevenson University is still with a mild lead. Most dangerous lead in Rocket League, some would say. Are on the sidewall trying to back in the desk. Took care of them. Take him off the pitch. Now it'll be it's right onto it. Ask to follow up. This will float high. 
what if tech, you know, is struggling to find challenges when they really need to? It feels like they're a little bit late to challenges, a little bit late to opportunities there. Ask wisely falling back for this one, but if they do a better job of reading one another, then maybe that's when we see the switch change and see, you know, Stevenson start to struggle with whatever Florida Tech's trying to bring to him at this point in time. Uh, being a little predictable so far, I, I think that's part of what Stevenson University has brought to the table and garnered their advantage so far with. Now another one! How many taps was that, Mar? Five shots, three goals, how many demos? I I'm not sure if I count that high, Bear Light. <laughs> I told you they're after him, like, whether it be passing plays or, you know, if those aren't working, like, Florida Tech was beginning to shut him down, you might as well get after him, right? Make sure they're not there. Yeah. Make those plays. And Mars right back at it again with another demo right off the kickoff. Absolutely. Just kind of kind of pay attention to that rear view mirror a little bit more, uh, especially if, you know, the score goes all the way down here. We get our predictable end with Flo Stevenson University. 60 seconds left before Florida Tech to come back. Strike not once, not twice, but thrice. How difficult that can be. Still, always, always be taking opportunities as they come and hit over, but there's nobody on the other side for the Panthers to pick that one up. So perhaps uh, some offensive cracks showing here in the game plan for Florida Tech Crimson. We're able to laser shot there, but again, Beeston couldn't beat Mar to it as Mar was able to recover very nicely. Uh, every single movement here from Stevenson has been super efficient, right? Every opportunity they need to get back to defensively. They seem to be so positionally sound where it takes less effort to get to places. That's a breakdown though. Okay. A quoted sec, perhaps a little bit of momentum rolling into the next one. Five saves from Dask. My goodness, getting it done on both sides of this pitch. 600 points to boot, to boot as well. Two, three, I'd say Crimson. Florida Tech squad, these Panthers have a shot at it. Two scores, I'm gonna say that's a Herculean effort here, Bear Light. Yeah, really stepped up and controlled the pace since the get-go. A couple of mistakes cost a couple of goals. If they continue to make those mistakes, I think Florida Tech is one of those teams that's capable, uh, especially the Crimson team, they're capable to you know, take advantage of them more so. Stevenson it got off to that hard, hot start to begin with, and you know, Florida Tech did a great job to really pull it back a little bit, but not enough to really challenge Stevenson at the end of the day. The Stevenson University not only got into a hot lead off to a hot lead in game number one, but also in the series as they will take the 1 0 lead. Yeah, so 4 2 game right here. Uh, I think that Florida Tech, the most important part of their entire series is literally right now, is paying attention to what exactly Stevenson did and just how many goals they took off of demos coming just a second beforehand consistently. Uh, if the answer is for the Florida Tech Panthers to simply pay a little bit more attention, have a little more awareness on the pitch for when these demos are coming in, uh, I think our game two script will already be written and this series is not over by any means. And to be honest, I think they picked up on it too because you're absolutely right and when those demos were were detected and they were able to get out of the way that's when they caught you know stevenson out of position and were able to just laser it back towards their own end with a wide open net a wide open cage so the quicker that you can recognize those demos on the way and you realize that that's one way that they like to play and establish themselves you'll be able to counter that without a hesitant uh doubt right it just seems like florida tech is up for the challenge in those moments but to do it consistently really is what they need to do and i'm confident in them they showed that they're more than capable of doing it it's just a matter of how many times can they make it happen over the course of a couple of games now we were just talking previously what that that uh Northwestern OC squad, like which team is better at evolving through a series and being reactive as well as proactive, right? Shutting down what your opponents are doing and also getting done what worked for you in previous games. Well, Stevenson getting back to their demoing ways. No fines being handed out quite yet, thankfully. <laughs> right. It's just a matter of time at this point, right? The way that they've been targeting y'all so often. But now it'll be a Stevenson here off the car of Optic, perhaps looking for a teammate. Either that or the shot was a little bit wide. Either way, they weren't able to do much with it. So Nask will launch it, going to the pitch. Did have the freshman in slot before, but a little bit too far away from it, and it was easily detected by the Stevenson defense, who has been so strong at picking up on any signs that Florida Tech has been trying to um, push to the box, or whether it be <laughs> horizontally or vertically. Good fake though, nonetheless, as they go back wall and miss. Oh. And Dask with a floater and was able to just sneak it by the last defender. It's been chaotic, 
put a Fortitude Tech lead nonetheless. The planet fakes it across one. Daz says, I will have about zero of that, my friend. Gets it past that one, but two, and gets Panthers not just their first score here, Bear Light, but also their first true lead in this series so far. To build on it. Something to build on, of course. Winston will fall back. Mar is so speedy to get to that where course and backwards, but Slot for Optic just able to return and get it up up into the corner. A bit of a double commit from Stevenson, but it works as they're able to just jump to it and beat that first layer of Lord and Tech defense. He's not able to continue as Mars right back on the gas pedal. We'll leave this to the box, but Dask, man on a mission to push it forward. Now will Eyeball try to get to the box himself off the corner, but nothing doing. It'll be Mars directly Ooh. back out. I like this. Stevenson kind of getting these passing plays connected. On their side of the pitch is a little bit easier than the opposite. I digress. Looking good is looking good. Wow, Mar having to stretch to get to that one. Stevenson almost kind of assuming that offensive like stance first, like trying to cut up on rotations and set, like when this isn't truly and fully defended away against. Florida Tech has had their way in offense past 15, 20 seconds or so. Rambling. It, it seems to be the Stevenson University defense. And Mar did just enough, like with a solo effort. It was very awkward backwards and still had the presence of mind to, to jump and make a couple of touches to just buy time, honestly, for the rest of his team to get back. And it was effective. You see them right back on it now because of Mar. Will pop it up. Optic with some great patience. We've seen a bit of double committing, so for him to see what was something I'd like to see here from Stevenson, who really has been struggling. You're right, FBI Topo. It has been for attack. And credit Florida Tech all the way. Florida Tech Crimson has been that team that's pushed them in, forced them backwards, forced them working east to west versus north to south, and it showed. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, it's a literally directional thing at that point, honestly, especially as there's such a fight over possession here in the middle. I mean, yes, it's only a one score lead. Yes, this will yield a victory for Florida Tech. We see no future scores in the next two minutes or so. And this is literally exactly like our game last time, right? Northwestern and OC Bravo come out to absolute battle in a seven total score game for their first of that best of five series. Northwestern taking it 4-3 and then immediately following it up with another 1-0, very methodical, much slower paced rock League game for our game number two. The way that both of these defenses have been adjusting is by allowing, you know, other defense or the opposing defense to dribble to them, right? Give them a little bit of extra space. Let them think that they have a little bit of room and then take it right away. The marker had to take it away from his own goal line, essentially. That was a really big save. Lot was able to accumulate a demo. Das tries the back wall, looks to challenge, although the double command from Stevenson was there. Optum was able to hang out and get Ooh. to it, but he's not uh, going to get yeah. that one. Das was able to break through, and you felt it coming. Yeah, Optic, uh, again, the true freshman, right? I, I love that. I, obviously, I don't think there's red shirting in Rocket League, but I still want to still use the term here, right? Optic. Uh, no, no boost. That, that, that was simple as, simple as that. If we're looking at like 15, even 20 boost right there, that, that's a different story and a more methodical stop for the defense for that squad. As it is now, though, Florida Tech now pushing with a two-goal lead. About 60 seconds to go. That 60-second drill is starting right now for Stevenson University. And they put up two goals in a matter of, what was it, like 12 seconds to kick off this match to begin with in game one. So, you know they're capable of it, but the way that Florida Tech Crimson has adjusted, I don't see it coming, especially in those more methodical games. Like you mentioned that we're in currently, it's been very, very slow paced. And in these games where goals have come as premium basically the entirety of this game, it's going to take a, a, a deep dive and what they can do to adjust against Florida Tech Crimson, who's come out with a mission to really uh, force Stevenson into awkward spots. But here's a good opportunity, as Mars gonna be one back, just for the double touch! No, gets the touch, but it was well wide of the, of the nets. They're still on it though, good touchdown from Planet, but red by the defense of Florida Tech. Yeah, Mars still there across mid pitch, but yeah, as this Stevenson University squad pours everything into offense that last 20, 30 seconds or so, being down 2-0, uh, you know, what's the point, right? Why leave a man back? Loss of 10, loss of 1, loss is a loss regardless here, Bear Light. Uh, th this could very easily have been a 2-0 game. Uh, 14 seconds, I don't see uh, a thrice scoring here for 
the Mustangs. Yeah, that'll be launch road for game number two. So we'll have even ground. It was a tale of two different games. Stevenson controlled the pace in game number one, but at the end of the day, you have to get right back to it. And Florida Tech Crimson credit them as they won game number two. And they did so in, a, in an impressive way, in a way that they weren't showing in game number one that they were capable of, yeah. which was moving the ball forward. They did a good job of trying to find the soft spaces in the defense. And for Stevenson, what it forces you to do is use a lot of boost to get to a ball that's behind you or have to half whip and, and try and uh, just get a touch to the corner and buy time. By the time you do that, Florida Tech was all over you. There's nowhere you can go with that ball. Panthers will hunt. I'm telling you here, Bear Light. Um, my thoughts are kind of are kind of twofold here for this uh, for for this squad. So, for, uh, uh, kind of theory crash with me for just a second and pretend, pretend that this was a two zero game instead of the three zero. I, I think that is saying a lot more, especially when we look at the amount of demos that Stevenson did not get in this game number mm. two. The game plan was revised. It was updated. They put it on the bulletin board and said, hey, that's what they're going to do just to avoid that in game number two. Also, again, uh, holding there was a two zero instead of a three zero with that with that you know last 14 second goal or whatever else like that. Personally, I'm always going to take a two zero victory over a four two victory, right? Shutting down the opponents and just going with so fewer kickoffs in a 2-0 situation than with the 4-2. Yeah, and you get in their heads when you do that, right? It's yes. all of a sudden, yes. when you don't see goals going in, it starts to feel impossible. It's human nature, right? When you aren't doing something, you see a zero on the board and you're like, man, it's been five minutes. And then your brain starts going, it's been eight minutes, ten minutes, right? Yep. How long can Florida Tech Crimson keep Stevenson scoreless, though? I don't think it's going to be that ten minute mark. I think they're hungry for another win here. And now it's actually uh, Florida Tech going for the demos. Dask with a couple of his own, although Sloth wasn't able to get the last demo, but Dask right back on it because they freed up all that spin. Uh, I, I gotta, I gotta touch on this one, Bearlight. So uh, you, you see the zero up there. Like, will this ever happen again? What Bearlight is talking about is what every single collegiate caster goes through over the summer. There's no gigs. You think you're getting forgotten about? Never cast anything <laughs> ever again in the collegiate orgs. Big shout out to the NECC. Now, solid hit, but Optic is not going to bite down on that one. Optic with a 50-50 low. That'll allow Planet to step up. A couple of touches, but Dask to do it. Ah, Nicole is stealing. Dask, great read yet again. Slop on it, too. Extra touch here, but there's the support unit. It didn't come out in time. Smyro's able to just dribble to it in this inner field. He's eyeballing the middle of the field himself, trying to put the box. And it will turn. He's got Optic, what a Ooh. passing boy. Once you have it so quickly there, FBI. Yeah, but you tee up a young man like this. He's going to swing for the fences all day long. Right here, Dask gets nothing more than a front row seat as this one passes by the windshield right there. 333 up top, Stevenson University. Mustangs here. Going to take back a lead, a lead that they did not see in game number two. Once again, uh, the, the pace of play, the way this is going is just constantly constantly evolving. Yeah, credit Stevenson University. They finally got a gig in the offseason. <laughs> <laughs> and he got that lead, that goal that felt oh. like it was never going to come around, but here we are. <laughs> well, now it, it hits too hard. It hits too hard. Honestly, it's too close <laughs> to home. <haul>. Yeah. <laughs> we have to drop it now. <laughs> uh, three cool. minutes to tap it down here. Yeah, three minutes left here. Tugboat in that shot. Although it's challenging, Optic was able to, to, uh, to get that save and push it out. Corner play right now. Optic kind of goes for it, sort of fakes onto the onto the bump right there. Dask oh, like stretches out for this one. That would have been, a, I mean, a hard angle, a tough ask, but a fantastic tying factor for the some Panthers right here. Mar now getting an over one. Dask, nice stop right here. Planet's going to have to force to pick this one up but no boost with which to speak of optic a huge booming clear over to the right corner and beastin and feastin a player that we haven't really talked that much about here so far bearline it's very true and it's not that they're not doing you know what they need to do you know sometimes you can be overlooked if you're just playing responsibly with positionally sound being that third rock you know what we're saying but for me uh you know, you want to see big plays out of your all three players. You know, in Rocket League, you when you have such little numbers as far as who is on your team, you you want to see big plays out of everybody here too. So maybe just not the time to shine so far in this series, but perhaps we'll see a little bit more out of it, especially if Florida Tech Crimson wants to 
string something together, multiple wins against Stevenson University, it all begins when you can get all three members of your team involved. So I, I'd like to see a little bit more. A hundred percent. And I'm not saying that, that is a fault of Beast and Feast by any means. It's just, I feel like Sloth mostly been in the offensive pressure. See, speaking of, Beast and Feast is a screamer across the bow. And Dask has mostly been in the defensive prowess. You know, you always get your strikers and your goalies with the glory, right? That's right. One's making the big play. The ones that show up on the scoreboard, right? Oh, oh my yeah. score's higher. Yeah, exactly. Than but, uh, <laughs> not all about that at the end of the day. And yeah, like you saw, Beast and Beast in did take it a strong shot, and when it was just up for the challenge, there with a huge save earlier. In fact, we'll get that touch out. We'll leave it for Gas, who's been proven to be the goal scorer for Florida Tech Crimson. But Optic has an answer there for the midfield, a solution. Way to load, Das. On right to Mar, he set up for a solo boy if he wanted. Lots of room to work with too, and a flip reset in hand. Shot goes top side, Mar oh, down. Mar just popped off. And if anything is going to get the Stevenson University offense going, it's boy like that. Yes, it will. And uh, we're looking at a very similar situation, just completely like symmetrically flip, right? This is Clemson, uh, or Clemson, Florida Tech Crimson, excuse me. Uh, what, with a two-goal lead coming in the last little bit, Stevenson University now in that stance, and the opponent with Zira will soon pour everything into offense to try and shake that tree and see what falls out. Wouldn't be surprised if that does not find anything. We see a 3-0 lead here for Stevenson. Stevenson still continuing on. Optic in the back side. Going to get this one back on over, and that should be a little bit up for... Planet right here just gets it taken away. Back to the mid pitch we go. I mean, every time this ball, this ball hits the ceiling, we're talking about three or four seconds burned off the clock. That's right, and all they're looking for. But Slot looking for a, hmm. for a net there. He's able to get that one. It would have been a decent shot, but time will run out. It'll be Stevenson University getting one back. And it has been just one team dominating or another. It, it hasn't been as close as we've seen, but it hasn't been that back and forth, left and right, uh, up and down, uh, black and white. Each yeah. in individual game has its own story, but that story is one team dominating. Yeah, it really is. And like the high scoring game one back and forth action that we saw with a couple of uh... Uh, a couple close lead changes, right? They're almost to a lead change, I should—I guess I should say. Now, now showing up with a couple of donuts right here. Uh, they're good for eating. They ain't good for Rocket League right here. 3-0 for Florida Tech. Again, a game that could have very easily been 2-0 without the 12 seconds or so gold that they came on to add on to the total here for Florida Tech. And then completely flip this one all the way around. Stevenson University able to read the game plan again. What I said it was important for Florida Tech, the times right now and the discussions that they have to try and go forth and repeat the the success that they had, and then also stop the success of their opponents pre uh, previously. The, the, a back and forth. Where, round and round we go here, Bear Light. Where we stop, I do not know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very interesting proposition that when you think about you know, how Stevenson was adjusted upon by Florida Tech Crimson and the fact that they were able to avoid the demos. So you think you know the equation mathematically would be that that the demo stepped back up for Stevenson, that they found ways to get back to the yep. physicality that they showed in the earlier games. But that wasn't the case. I didn't see a whole lot of demos. I just saw some clean plays, yep. a responsible positioning, and Stevenson University found a different way to get that win against Florida Tech Crimson. And if there's multiple ways that you can find wins against a team, that gives me confidence in Stevenson University to be able to close out this series. I see them winning this one in, in four. I, I like it. I like it right here. Again, so Stevenson kind of adapting to the gameplay and finding multiple ways to win. That was a uh, physical gameplay earlier, and then straight up, you just just shut down defense and really kind of complex offense. That there weren't many Stevenson University goals in that game. Oh, there's only two, and neither of them just happened by oh some, some huge mistake. Oh, just happened to bounce on in there. It happened off the back of just again just rapid fire Gatlin gun shots. Right. That's right, and they, they've really been earning every little opportunity that they get. And they didn't come easy, right? There was, it was two goals in the last one, and, and they really had to work for them and, and figure out. So it's not like Florida Tech Crimson has really fallen off to any degree. So Stevenson University just found an extra step in their pace, and will build off of it. But you can never really rest when Dask is across the pitch. He gets the ball so quickly, his challenges are so strong, that you can't rest and knowing that he's there you have to just continuously keep finding ways to win 
getting a nasty miss right there now and setting it up across the middle. Got to get out from that one. That angle was not true, so that was a great stop and pop there from Optic. Stevenson still looking for their first. Mar getting cute with the fakes and whatnot, and that's going to be enough. Now Planet taking up the mantle right here. Sloth up to it, drops down. Everybody in the air right now, but Stevenson can't get the good angle on it. From the other side, even though Florida Tech's defense was triple committed. When you play that 50-50, like we saw from Mar, and you have boost in your tank, and you use it to marry it when you're approaching that 50-50, you'll win it more times than not. And Mar has shown us that he's the mastermind of not showing his hand, right? Not showing that he has boost in the tank. So you take a lower 50-50 with him, and what happens is he ends up winning it because he uses that boost that you didn't think he had to begin with in that 50-50. So I love the fakes that he's throwing. Yeah, another opportunity for here is win it, try to push forward, but again, Dask was up for the challenge. This mounts high. Optic looking to build off of its humor. Which no one knows how to help it gets a little bit wider than that. Wow, so past half time now here at Bear Light. Uh, I, I agree with the 4 1 Fred, or the 3 1 Fred, excuse me, Stevenson in 4. Uh, I could not have called a scoreless affair up to this point, even after one team put up a goose egg. Stevenson game two, Florida Tech, you say game three. Interesting. Because we've you know we've seen methodical and low scoring games, but what we haven't seen is a scoreless game, right? It's been one way or another. Typically somebody breaks through, and whether that's bounce luck or you know working it hard, we saw a strong, strong team play from Stevenson as well. A pass to the box that was just labeled for the back of the net. So again, just another reason why I think he will fight through it, but Florida Tech Crimson continues to give us reasons to say we're going to be around, especially when Dask is his shot. Optic able to make that save, though. So Stevenson University answers just about every shot that Florida Tech's throwing at him. Yeah, I love that. Dask getting involved at both sides. Oh, no. Just a little bit to the outside right there, bottom right corner, but that's going to be enough. Wow. Dask, Dask, Dask. After five shots, finally finding payload. Dask uh, got tired of us predicting Stevenson University with this <laughs> one. And he went out here on a mission to prove us strong. So far, so good, but he got a minute 16 left. And Stevenson University, whose defense has been stacked, he stood up for a couple of saves, but eventually Florida Tech, Grimson was able to break through. Our will look to try to get it going in the Stevenson University area they got the demo but nobody's Ooh. back here at all i mean i'm talking huh. about there was time where they should have been able to get back they were just full on commit in florida tech crimson yeah. which is one of the easiest goals you'll ever see hey and they say young folks don't commit these days <laughs> stevenson university all three players everything up front even this one liner is always impressive on point <laughs> Yet again. <laughs> that, that was lame as all get out, let's be honest with each other. <laughs> it wasn't great, but that was. Oh! As the demo okay. again. So, okay. Stevenson University, they found a different way than physicality to win last time. They said, hey, wait, we still have that in our back pocket. Maybe Florida Tech Crimson forgot about it. And it seems as if maybe they did. Because now Stevenson University on the board. 51 seconds left. An opportunity to tie it off the kickoff too. They'll move forward. We mark from the corner to the ceiling. Now flipping it over. Oh, you saw Planet, but unfortunately, a few two touches too many. But still off the ceiling is beat to it by slot. The freshman able to clear the zone. I, I love Mar getting his chance to shine. Uh, I'm not sure if down by one in a, in, a, in a tying factor a game is the time to try and get everything done by yourself. Uh, li like you said, just way too much over the top right there from Mar. Now a couple of demos on the other side. Optics got to stretch to get to it, but does. 15 seconds to go and a huge clear the other way. Now it's back at you though. Florida Tech Crimson playing the tug of war game. Anytime you push down the field, we're gonna send it right back. Including all the demos, but we have Optic off the corner. Opportunity, space given up. Dask able to get a touch though. Optic, awkward. Left it for Mar though. He's got a touch, keeping it up. He'll be planted. Goes high with it. Optic has enough boost. Back roll it goes. Chance win it down. Oh, oh. it bounces around. <laughs> but they do not get it done. Our predictions die with that chance. An opportunity, and so does the ball. And now again, Florida Tech Crimson will keep themselves around.
Love it. Boiled a best of five series, boiled to a best of three series, boiled all the way down to a one and done. It all comes down to right here. Continuing the theme of no sweeps on stream as well. What, we had a 3-2 game to start this one off, 3-1 after that with Northwestern and uh, uh, Oklahoma Christian. And now uh, now it'll be a 3-2 one way or the other. Uh, pred predictions, I'm done. I'm done on that one. I'm done on that one. I, I, not that we're t counting out the, not that they were counting out the Panthers by any means, but especially given that we get down to past three minutes, no scores on boards. Not for lack of trying, but no scores on boards. This looked like we were ahead straight to overtime town. It really did with that last opportunity. I was like, oh, perfect. The prediction still lives. Uh, it, it didn't come to life, but I was pretty convincing, though. Don't lie. <laughs> but uh, again, Florida Tech Crimson just up for the challenge. Apparently, they wanted to to shut my mouth and say, hey, we're here <laughs> to hang until the very end and force another game five. And that's what the NEC is all about. Great, incredible matches that go to the very end. It's game number five between Florida Tech Crimson and Stevenson University. And Mar right off the bat, shot taken a little bit high though. And now all the way back down. Can they get to it? Optic was able to respawn in time to get over and make that save early. I do love that. I do love that. And now in-game announcer just going crazy right there with the saves back and forth. From some early offices. Well, Mar gets a decent clear, but Dask always there. We were talking earlier here about Florida Tech stretching the field and having their players play more even-handed roles. Not exactly the striker and the goalie that we were talking about. I think that a lot of that success in game number four and the reason why Florida Tech squad is here in game five is, is because of that. It's because they're able to let different players play some different roles. That's right, and they are all very strong at these different roles, which is rare to say the least. You know, you find it obviously at the top level of Rocket League play, but you know, other than that, you know, you can be happy and satisfied with having role players who do what they do very strongly. Let's let's talk about strikers or somebody who puts on pressure. Let's talk about a goaltender. Um, but to have the qualities and be able to step up into any role, because maybe a teammate's off, right? And they're not fulfilling that role. You're able to step into that super easily. That that makes the world just so much easier for a program. You know, a college program has limited options as far as players to put out there. So if you have people that can fill multiple roles, it just makes your life so much easier. Yeah, I mean, what, four active uh, players could have started here for the side of Florida Tech, five for Stevenson right now. Uh, uh, if this game was more of a blowout, I do think we would have seen a couple like bench players kind of come and play under the lights and sounds of the stream and whatnot, but uh, th this is an absolute barn bird that uh, started a little bit uh, farther away from each other. You know, 4-2 for Stevenson, Florida Tech follows it up with the 3-0 next one, and now has come down all the way to the wire. Two minutes and still, no scores on these boards. Continues, right? The defensive just clinic both ways yeah. throughout the entirety of the first little bit. Nobody wants to give up that early goal, because when you do that, you give up early momentum, especially mm -hmm. in a game number five, you know. We saw early goals here. Oh, nice shot there from Mar. He slotted that from that angle. Watch this one again. That was just clinical. Wow. Absolutely perfect. Are we sure that Mustangs don't have opposable thumbs? Uh, are they really cle like uh, cleft hooved? But they are. You know what I'm talking about. Their hooves are cleft or cleaved. I'm not sure what the term is there. Somebody uh, Google it. But yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, whether they have thumbs or not, they did a great job to, to pull that one in. And uh, Mar should show it off now this way. Love to see it. Clovenhoof. Clovenhoof. Sorry. Sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry for making you guys struggle through that with me. So the Stevenson we University. Yep. Yeah, exactly. We all got there together. Stevenson. Okay. Optic. From, from mid pitch right here, a sniper shot that almost lands right there. Get down, Mr. President. It was Florida Tech's response. And not going to see a 2 0 lead, Stevenson, so far. Now, a little bit of offense for these Panthers. And now it's Mustangs trying to answer back, but Dask has been all over them constantly. How is this the moment he shines? It is! What a shot! Top left corner! We haven't been talking about him much, but he shines at a very, very solid time. One goal, one shot, one save right here for Beeston and Feeston. And I'll go ahead and say it, hands down, best name of these six so far. Not not talking smack to any of these other players, but Beeston and Feeston, come on, people, what more do you want? Love seeing that. 
Right time to shine. Caught himself on the board. Now Dask looking for more. All right, it's that pass planted there in the corner. He's got support as well. Dask probably out of boost. Yeah, he rolled back to that 100 boost too. It was a little bit sketch, but he still got to it nonetheless. And will pull it back down. I think a roll one. No, they bounced out of it. Now a redirect opportunity from Slot, but it was well high of where he could get to. So now it'll go to midfield. Easton and Beeston will get up so quickly in that midfield. Keep this pressure on. Dask looking for Slop. Oh, what a save. Planet got back to that one, and I'm not sure how. Yeah, I, that one. Breaking, breaking the laws of speed and time or something right there. Gravity, maybe. I don't know. That was... Uh, I, I also do not know how that one happened. 50 seconds to go here. Tie ball game. Game 5 situation. Series on the line. And Mother finds the shot again. Two shots, two goals, 100% efficiency, Bear Light. That's incredible. O optic number one. With the perfect pass, labeled where Mark could get to it. And I thought Mark was just going to go up the front of his car, perhaps try a double touch. No, flip for reset. Use the bottom of his car to put enough off of it as well for it to come back right to him. And flip in the back pocket makes that shot even stronger than it would have been otherwise. And now with 36 seconds, left tuck mode. They're in the driver's seat. They're taking another shot here for it at Crimson. Uh, they have a lifeline left, and Beeson Beeson with a big save to keep them alive. Yes, it was Beeson Beeson talking about him in game number three, really coming alive in five. 18 seconds to go right here, Florida Tech, offensive stance. This is a tying factor coming in for Tempted, I should say, for Florida Tech. Up down bottom, Stevenson now just playing the garbage time game. Hit it down bottom and try and ground this out. No, that's still a that's still a balance. I thought that timer was gonna be done and dusted. We got triple zeros up top, Bear Light. Nope. To and it falls to the ground. And falling short is Florida Tech's comeback effort. As that crimson side for Florida Tech. I saw Stevenson University pop up in the great moments. That was such a strong uh, best of five. Uh, and game number five, both ways had huge goals, including Mars with that flip where he said uh, uh, double touch there after the amazing pass from Optic. I mean, yeah. that series it was just excellent. And, and Mar popped off that that series too. He had oh, yes. multiple super mechanical plays that he made look extremely easier, way easier than they are. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, shout out Optic. Setting the play up, uh, shout out times 10 to Mar for, again, having the skills to pay the bills in that situation. Both of those, both of these goals here in game five, I mean, this was won by Mar with the assistance of teammates when we're talking about offensive prowess and whatnot. Obviously, uh, uh, all three members having defensive uh, kind of uh, like holds right there, defensive stands right there in game number five. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff, Verilite. That's going to be Stevenson Varsity Squad A improving to the 1-1 scoreline. Like you said, Kennesaw putting them down in three last week, coming off of a forfeit victory. Florida Tech, uh, you know, the, the, they won zero coming into this, now 1-1, one, one, but barely barely this is a game five barn burner for the ages last two games going down to a one score differential i was telling you yeah you can't look at early uh you know early records and and make anything of it that's anything more than uh you never know until you play the, the match and that was just incredible uh a series here in, in fbi tugboat we actually head out west for our next matchup so i'm excited to see that here in in just a bit uh what do you what do you see as far as you know this next matchup goes uh I'm excited to see what the West, uh, what side, what they have to offer as well. How the West was won. The University of California at Santa Cruz coming on here. This is Champions West out here taking on Arizona State University. So that's the ASU. I believe that's the Sun Devils. I can't exactly remember here. That's but right. regardless, like you said, the West Coast getting it done. West Coast, best coast. That's what I'm saying now because I moved away from the Carolinas. Now I'm here out here in Vegas. So I'm now, now touting, uh, now touting their side. I'll turn on their side. Fair enough. My, my Fair loyalties enough. <laughs> are for are for are for sale all the time, is what I'm saying, and the price is cheap. Best Coast, Beast Coast, <laughs> both the same. Uh, they each have their perks, but West Coast gameplay is going to be awesome. Yes, the the Sun Devils is correct, by the way. And uh, University of California Santa Cruz. Do you have any idea what their mascot is? Probably something uh, about I'm sorry. Their uh, their mascot? Uh, UCSC oh. Gold. Is that the Bears? 
I'm not 100% sure. We'll have that information and more for you guys in, uh, say, about 10 minutes. we got to give these teams a little bit of time to kind of group up, get into the lobby. FBI Tugboat and Bear Light. We will be back with you guys in just a little bit.